BBC News at midday. President Zelensky of Ukraine has marked the 500th day of the Russian invasion of his country by releasing a video of him visiting a liberated island in the Black Sea. He said Snake Island was proof that Ukraine would return every inch of its territory. Mr Zelensky has been touring NATO members, urging them to invite Ukraine to join the alliance. General Sir Richard Shiroff, a former NATO deputy commander for Europe, says he fears that won't happen. Now is the time for NATO to be really strong and send a powerfully strong message uh, to, to Russia. Anything less than that is going to be taken by Russia as NATO weakness and give succor to a beleaguered president who will think, well, I'm just going to hang on here because who knows, Mr. Trump might come into the White House in 2025 and then I'm going to be OK. The governor of the eastern Ukrainian region of Donetsk says at least six civilians have been killed by Russian artillery shelling in the town of Liman. Another five people are reported to have been wounded. Liman is a key railway junction in the region. The BBC has said it takes allegations made against employees very seriously after reports were published in The Sun that an unnamed presenter had paid a teenager for explicit photographs. The paper says the youngster's family had complained to the corporation in May and had been dismayed that the presenter had remained on air since. The BBC said it had actively tried to contact the family about the complaints but had received no reply. A man has been charged with the murder of a husband and wife in their 60s who were found dead in Essex on Easter Sunday. Police originally said the deaths of Stephen and Carol Baxter at their home were not suspicious, but they've now charged Luke DeWitt, who's 33 and from Colchester, with murder, possession of a Class A drug and theft. A woman and another man have been released on bail. The US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has called for deeper cooperation between the US and China in addressing what she called the existential threat of climate change. During a visit to Beijing, she urged China to support international initiatives such as the Green Climate Fund. I believe that continued US-China cooperation on climate finance is critical. As the world's two largest emitters of greenhouse gases and the largest investors in renewable energy. We have both a joint responsibility and ability to lead the way. The organisers of this weekend's British Grand Prix at Silverstone are using facial recognition technology to try to counter fears that environmental activists might try to disrupt the race. People from the Just Stop Oil group have managed to evade security at several sporting events, including the World Championship snooker, an Ashes test match and most recently the tennis at Wimbledon. The outgoing chair of the Climate Change Committee, Lord Deben, says he has no sympathy with the tactics of the protesters but believes the government must act on their concerns. The reason for it is that very large numbers of people recognise that we're not doing anything like enough to deal with the worst uh, material danger to civilization and human beings and the whole natural world. We really have fallen behind and we must get on with it. It's emerged that more than 700,000 households did not receive the help they were entitled to with their energy bills. The data was uncovered by BBC Verify and Moneybox, which follows this news bulletin. People who live off-grid, such as in park homes, care homes or on canal boats, did not receive the government help automatically and had to apply for it. Rain has delayed the start of play on the third day of the third Ashes Test at Headingley. Australia are expected to resume their second innings after one o'clock. They're currently on 116 for four, giving them a lead of 142 runs over England. BBC News.